want to talk about how your skeletal muscles respond to exercise. Um, first off, one of the things that really doesn't occur to any great degree is that when you work out, you do not get more skeletal muscle fibers because during embryonic development, what happens is you started out with these individual little uninucleated cells called myoblasts. And then during embryonic development, they actually fuse to form a skeletal muscle fiber. And then once they have fused, the skeletal muscle fiber is um, amitotic, doesn't go through mitosis. This process is called syncytium. Now you do have a few muscle stem cells called satellite cells that are present that might be able to do a little bit of rep repair. But for all practical purposes, hardly any skeletal muscle cell division occurs after birth. So you're kind of born with all the skeletal muscle fibers you're ever going to have. But we, of course, know that depending on what you do with your muscles, they can develop in different ways. <clears throat> so we'll use a couple of extremes as an example. So how would you cause muscle hypertrophy, which is what we're seeing here, muscle hypertrophy? Okay, so muscle hypertrophy, and you kind of know this because you've you've seen this occur, Um Increasing the size of a whole muscle in an adult um, results from increasing the length of individual fibers and the diameter of the fibers by increasing the number of contractile proteins within the fibers, but not from increasing the number of fibers. So in an adult, if you do a certain type of training, which is high weight, low rep, um, and high weight is about 75% of the maximum tension you can generate. You're trying to use that muscle at about 75%. Now, most of us don't actually have our percent calculated and then it would change as we got stronger and weaker. But um, if you can do a lot of reps, if you can do 20 reps, you're definitely not at 75%. So this is called strength training and it's high intensity strength training. And what happens is... If you do this strength training, you are communicating to your muscle that I need you to be stronger in the future. And then if you feed the muscle, especially proteins, but nutrients because you actually need ATP, um, and rest that muscle, then what will happen is protein synthesis will occur when you are resting. And it increases the number of actin and myosin, myofilaments, and the number of myofibrils with protein synthesis not necessarily the number of fibers. And when you're doing that kind of activity, it's mostly white fibers that you are preferentially training the fast glycolytic ones because I'm picking up something really heavy and I'm putting it down, picking up something really heavy and I'm putting it down. So they don't have as much myoglobin. They may t make ATP primarily anaerobically, but they're big and they're strong. <clears throat> Only a few contractions at a time are necessary or possible for this kind of training. Testosterone definitely helps, right? Same amount of weight with more testosterone is going to get more protein synthesis of actin and myosin. And if you're trying to build muscle mass, you do not want to strain the muscle at the same time you're doing to protein, or trying to do protein synthesis because then you'll be using the ATP and nutrients for muscle contraction instead of for the anabolic reactions that you're trying to do. So the rest and recovery phase is actually important. Now, if you're doing weaker activity, but for longer periods of time, like this guy's a marathon runner, your muscles develop entirely differently because you're communicating something very different to them. So this is often called aerobic exercise because of course it needs a tremendous amount of support from the cardiovascular and respiratory system because you need lots and lots of oxygen and blood flow for this. And so if you do this well below 75% tension so you can sustain it for a long time and do lots of reps like this guy's running you could be cycling it doesn't result in significant amounts of muscle hypertrophy because you're not communicating with your muscles that you need them to generate more tension the next time you're telling them that you actually want them to last longer the next time so this is long duration, low intensity exercise. And most of the changes that you're communicating to your muscles is, I really need you to preferentially train these red fibers, oxidative phosphorylation, make ATP primarily aerobically. Over time, what will happen is you'll develop more capillaries around the muscle, more myoglobin in the muscle, more mitochondria in the muscle. And this generates lots and lots of muscle tone good blood flow, good muscle tone, 
greater endurance and fatigue resistance as long as oxygen is available. The muscle girth doesn't tend to bulk up because you actually do not need it to be any stronger. And um, the muscle girth may decrease slightly, even if your tone actually increases. So muscle tone increases, but it doesn't necessarily get much bigger. And of course, the other benefit to this type of activity is it also produces beneficial changes in the respiratory and the cardiovascular system. So what do you do if you want both? Well, you have to do both kinds of activity. And like this guy, you probably have not had a burger in recent memory. Um, so um, what happens as you age? Um, as you age, and if you are not working out as hard as this dude, the maximum force that your muscles can generate will decrease by about 30 to 40 percent between the ages of 30 and 80. But it's not a sentence, it's a predisposition. Because if you are super active, and this guy is over 30, um, you can maintain muscle mass. It's just that that is not our predisposition. It's also a little harder to maintain muscle mass as you age. Um, uh, we tend to be a lot less active as we age. And so what happens over time is that your fibers tend to decrease in di diameter because you're not lifting as many heavy things, you're not going as many places. And, but a lot of this loss can be prevented by exercise. So it, when we are more active, we can actually maintain our muscle mass and therefore our metabolism, just not the predisposition that we usually choose. Um, and if we are super duper active and do, for instance, a lot of high rep, low, um, high weight, low rep activities. I couldn't, but maybe somebody could build this kind of muscle mass.